Yes, thank you so much. Uh, Monet, I want to come to you. When we look at um, having caseworkers that are appropriate for the job. Yes, ma'am. And that are going to have that duty of care to the children that they're responsible for. What I'd love to have from you for the record is um, talk to me about what a caseworker should do. If you had had a perfect caseworker, how would they have worked with you, encouraged you, listened to you, helped provide and protect you? Well, nobody's perfect, but they didn't do their job. They were supposed to see me every month in person. They never saw me every month in person. Maybe if she would have came to my group home where I was at and saw me in person, she could have thought about moving me, but she never come to she never came to see me. Um, they're supposed to let me go to my court. Let me pop in right there. Mm -hmm. Now, this was over how many years? Five. Over five years. Okay. So for she should have seen you once a month for five years, and you said in your testimony about once every six months you would hear from them. She's supposed to see us in person every month. Right. Okay. And I had three caseworkers. Only one of them actually did their job. She came all the way five hours away to the lockdown facility to see me. Um, nobody's perfect, but they didn't listen. And when I acted out was the only time that they would ever answer their phone. If I was in tr like when I had gotten into an accident, they did not answer the phone. But when it was time for me to leave that placement, that's when they would answer. They didn't answer at the times that they should, only when it was time to move my placement. So if you were talking to children's services and you were writing the job description for somebody that is going to be a caseworker, what would you put in that job description to, to meet young girls like you? What, should, what would you want to see them do on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis? Well, listen to the children. Okay. I'll need them to check in with them as they should every month. Make sure that they're... Placement is comfortable for them. Don't just stick them somewhere and not answer the phone for them no more. Don't just tell them the only reason you're on meds is because you don't behave. Like, make them feel love. Make them feel like they have a family in care at least. Excellent. Thank you for that. Ms. Aldridge, um, as I read your testimony, I thought about parental rights and parents having rights. And as you have been through such a terrible ordeal, and I know it's something that your heart grieves every single day. And you said that you were doing this because you don't want other, other moms to have to live through what you've lived through. So... Now, looking back on your ordeal, what would be the steps you would encourage other women who find themselves in the situation where you were, uh, what would you say, here's a way to preserve your parental rights? Get an attorney. I would definitely say an attorney is know your rights i guess study about it i don't i don't have no idea i would definitely say having an attorney having an attorney would i don't know you would have understood what your rights were i mean you can go with your gut but just having an attorney that's a big thing i think having an attorney all right thank you thank you mr chairman thank you senator blackburn senator welch